بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الحبت في الله امام بابهاري رحمه الله عليه said and this is the 32nd point in شرح السنه by امام بابهاري رحمه الله عليه قال والحج والغزو مع الامام ماض وصلاه الجمعه خلفهم جائزه ويصلي بعدها ست ركعات ويفصل بين كل ركعتين هكذا قال أحمد بن هنبل رحمة الله عليه إمام بابا هاري رحمة الله عليه said حج and jihad are to be carried out under his leadership meaning the ruler the Juma prayer behind them regardless of whether they are righteous or wicked. Uh, and it is allowed. And after it, six raka prayer units should be prayed, splitting it into sets of two raka units. This is the saying of Ahmed bin Hanbal. So Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah again emphasize the important qaida fi ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and this is what distinguishes ahl sunnah from the khawarij and the takfiris and the neo takfiris and uh akhwan muslimin and the sururis and various sects and groups and again we we talked about this before we made a distinguishment as some of the ulama do uh in their ta'rifat or their uh definitions about groups and sects. A sect, for example, is like the Khawarij. The Khawarij are a sect. They hold as a part of their Aqidah, a part of their creed, that they make takfir of the person who makes major sins. And as a part of their creed, that they believe with regards to Iman, that Iman is either a hundred percent complete camel or that iman is not existent so that's why the sinner to them the the person who commits major sins is not a believer at all to them because they believe either a person has full iman or they have no iman which is in opposition to the murjia and ahl sunnah holds the creed that iman fluctuates sometimes it's high and sometimes it is low and a person might have complete iman or they may have partially man that by doing sins a person's iman is decreased and by doing righteous deeds a person's iman is increased imam baba hari rahmatullah so he said and this is the part of the sharh of sheikh rabi bin hadi Al Medhali Hafidullah Ta'ala he said Hajj wa Ghazu Mali Man al Muslimin Mab. So a kana birrin o fajirin. Wa kada fa'ala sahaba rad ridwanullahi alayhim kana yusaluna wara umara su kel hujaj wa gaidihi wa minhum abdullah bin umar rawi had al hadith. Shaykh Rabi Hafidullah Ta'ala said, Al Hajj wal Ghazu Mal Imam Muslimin Ma. He said that performing the Hajj and going on Ghazawat or Jihad or fighting behind the Imam of the Muslims, regardless of whether they are righteous or wicked, this was the actions of the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with all of them. That the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala majma'een that they were in agreement. So this shows us this is a qa'idah. This is a a rule, a principle of Ahlul Sunnah. This is what distinguishes Ahlul Sunnah from those other groups who go astray in this aspect of creed is that Ahlul Sunnah believes like the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'een and follows the minhaj and methodology of the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum in that they believe in praying behind the leaders of the muslims regardless of whether they're righteous or wicked 
meaning that even if he's a wicked sinner, he drinks alcohol, he commits zina openly, he spends the money of the Muslims lavishly, he does this, he does that, but these are sins that are major sins. They still hold as long as he is a Muslim, and he still prays and implements the prayer, then they don't believe in rebelling against him. In fact, they believe in being obedient to their commands that are in conform that are that uh, conform to sh to the Sharia, those commandments. Asmi'u Taala Mari al Muslim fi ma'ahibu wa kariya. Kama kala Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in Sahih Muslim as with in Kitab al Imara, he said, uh, "Hearing and obey, hearing and obeying the Muslim leader, and that which you uh, love, and that which you dislike." As long as he doesn't order you with wickedness, with doing sinfulness. So if he commands you to do wickedness, then there is no hearing and there is no obeying. Meaning in that command. That doesn't negate doing, following him in other commandments that are in accordance with the Sharia. So this is not, this does not negate ta'a mutlaqa or ta'a naam ta'a mutlaqa this doesn't negate complete obedience to the ruler so meaning for example if you have a leader and they command you to take riba or however they they uh, promote certain sins and they encourage you and want you to do that they command you to do that then you should not obey them in that command but that does not negate the fact that you still obey them in other commands. They are the sin, sinful ones, and they will carry that sin. And you don't follow them in sin. But that does not negate the good that they command you to. Nor does it negate their authority. And this is in opposition to the Khawarij and those Tekfiris and the neo Tekfiris and those other groups who believe in rebelling against the leader for major sins or whatever or their shortcomings in rulership by ruling by the Sharia or what have you, that those people believe in rebelling. They have no, it's it's a very black and white issue for them. You're either ruling perfectly by the Sharia or you're not ruling by the Sharia. And so in that case, so you're either, in that case, they believe you're either a believer with Iman or you are a disbeliever. And this shows you the relationship in creed that those neo tekfiri groups have with the Khawarij, with the original sect of the Khawarij, because they still negate Iman completely. Meaning that for them, Iman is very black and white. You either have complete Iman or you are a uh, or you are a disbeliever. And so this is where you see that carryover of the uh, the creed of the Khawarij up until this day and may Allah protect us from their sins and their wicked creed on me Ubaidullah bin Ali bin Khayar reports I went to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu whilst he was being besieged and I said to him you are the ruler of the Muslims in general and you see what has befallen you we are being led to prayer by a leader of insurrection and we are afraid of being sinful so Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu said the prayer is the best of actions which people do. So when the people do good deeds, do good along with them. When they do evil, avoid their evil. And this Ruahu, this is in uh, Bukhari. Abdullah ibn Ahmed ibn Hanbal reports in the, his Masail, I asked my father, how many rakas should I pray after Jumu'ah? He said, if you wish, pray four rakas, or if you wish, pray six rakas in twos. That is what I prefer, but if you pray for, there is no harm. Abu Dawood reports in his Masail, I heard Ahmed saying uh, regarding prayer after Jumu'ah, if one prays four, good, if one prays two, good, and if one prays six, good. Uh, Shaykh Rabi Havadullahu Ta'ala says with regards to this, he says that uh, he says that is ma'roof on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kama shahaduhu Abdullah bin Umar annahu kana yusalli rakatain bad al-jumu'ah fi baytihi 
uh, that he said it was well known, or it's well known, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as was witnessed by Abdullah bin Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray two prayer units after Jumu'ah in his home. And this is what we have in the hadith as well. And the Shaykh says, have the Allah ta'ala, Uh, regarding this, as far as six rakat, he says, "Fala a'raf la He said that he does not; he's not aware of any dalil for this. That this qul, which is attributed to Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah taala, uh, that he knows no dalil for this. And we know some of the Sahih ahadith that you can find in Bukhari and Muslim, which state that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like the hadith we just mentioned of Abdullah bin Umar. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he he said uh and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yusalli kabl al dhuhr rakatain wa badaha rakatain wa bad al maghrib rakatain fi bayti wa bad al wa bad al isha rakatain wa kana la yusalli bad al jumwa hatta yansaraf fa yusalli rakatain for from amongst the ahadith is the hadith in uh, Bukhari where uh, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray before dhuhr four raka units of prayer. And after it, two raka. So this is the sunnah ru'atib of uh, uh, sunnah ru'atib that we should pray regularly uh, uh, the raka'at for the regular uh, salat the sunnah, so to speak, as the people refer to it, and as the uh, fuqaha, especially, of this time referred to as sunnah. So the Prophet ﷺ used to pray four uh, rakats before dhuhr and rakatain after it. And after maghrib, rakatain in his home. And after isha, he would pray two prayer units. And he would pray after jumuah, he would not pray after jumuah, until he left the masjid and reached his home and he would pray two prayer units. So this is one of the ahadiths that we have a dalil for this, but as far as the dalil uh, that Imam Ahmed, uh, or the statement of Imam Ahmed, the Shaykh mentioned that he does, he's not aware of any dalil for this statement. Then Imam Barbahari Rahmatullah said, قال المؤلف رحم الله تعالى وخلاف قريش إلى أن ينزل عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام that the خلافة or the خليفة which is a big thing of this time in age will remain with قريش until عيسى عليه الصلاة والسلام descends. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala reports that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this affair, Khalifa, will remain with the Quraysh. None will rebel against him except that Allah will throw him down upon his face as long as they establish the religion. And this is narrated in uh, Sahih Bukhari. Uh, so the Shaykh mentions, Hafid Allah ta'ala, some very important uh, aspects regarding the Khalifa. He said that the this meaning, the Khalifa, that the person who establishes the Khalifa or is the Khalifa, that there are certain conditions as far as being the Khalifa. So, what Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah mentioned. Uh, the Khilafah with the Quraysh, which comes from Dalil, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, And the Shaykh is just mentioning that there are other conditions with regards to this as well that Imam Babahari did not uh, mention here. And some of those rights and some of those conditions uh, that the Imam or the Khalifa should meet is that he should be knowledgeable and he should be muj a mujtahid you know, someone who has knowledge, a high level of knowledge, striving 
uh, with Islamic jurisprudence that they should be have that uh, that that ilm and that fiqh, and that they should be just, and that they should the people should be pleased with them as their leader. That this is a condition for them to be a leader, uh, and then from that shuru from those shurut as well is that of course that they are Qurayshi. They're from the Quraysh. If those conditions are met from uh, either three or four of those characteristics, then and this person is a Qurayshi, then the, the haq is with them. So meaning that if those conditions are not present and the person is just Qurayshi, then their right is removed. Meaning that they don't have the right to the Khalifa just because they're Qurayshi. Because if they just are Qurayshi but they're not practicing Islam, they're not just, they have no characteristics of uh, being an Imam or being the Khalifa, then they lose that, that right because they have lost that right of rulership by wasting their own haq, wasting their own rights, wasting their own selves. So this is why it's important that along with being from the Quraysh, that this would be the most camel. But if the person is not from the Quraysh, that doesn't negate that they can be Khalifa. And, but this is from the prophetic hadith showing us the most camel situation is that the Khalifa should be from the Quraysh. But if someone from the Quraysh arises, but then they are not uh, religious or what have you, they don't have any of those other conditions, then they uh, do not have that right to rulership as the Sheikh mentions. And those are just some of the benefits from those statements of Imam Babahari pertinent to the Khalifa and pertinent to the uh, not rebelling against the ruler. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.